Have you ever noticed how poker can sometimes really bring out the worst in people? Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today's video. Get ready, because we're about to start an exciting exploration of poker's most intense moments. Let's start things off with Garrett Adelstein, who, as everybody knows, is a well-known figure on the Hustler Casino live show and has reportedly raked in over $1.8 million in winnings. He's even considered by many to be one of the best live cash players globally. Now, in this high-stakes game with blinds at 100, 200, 400, with a $400 big blind ante and an even heftier $800 big blind straddle, we see in one intense hand, Adelstein, holding an eight of and seven of clubs, raises to $3,000 from the third blind. Robbie Liu, sitting in the straddle with a jack of clubs, four of hearts, decides to call. The tension escalates as the flop reveals 10 heart and 10 nine of clubs. Adelstein makes a bet of 2,500 and Liu, unfazed, calls. Then the drama peaks when the turn brings out the three of hearts. Adelstein boldly bets 1,000. Lou, after a moment of contemplation, raises to 2,000. Adelstein, determined, goes all in, putting Lou in a tight spot for almost 109K. Here's where things take a bizarre turn. Lou, after briefly rechecking her cards, decides to call, claiming she has a bluff catcher. They agree to run it twice, but fate wasn't in Adelstein's favor, and he loses both times. The reaction? Astonishment. Adelstein's face says it all. He's in disbelief. How could a relative newcomer to the game make such a call? Doug Polk's immediate reaction was to tweet that Hustler should halt the stream for an investigation, and many echoed this sentiment. Given the infamous Mike Postal scandal, suspicions were high, so Joey Ingram didn't waste a moment and launched an emergency live broadcast to dissect the event. The footage from Hustler Casino Live shows a shocked Adelstein leaving the table, followed by Lou and another player, Rip thought to be Lou's business partner. Background arguments were audible, with Rip claiming that Adelstein demanded his money back, nearly $135,000. What is he doing out there? He seems heated about something. I think that's what she did. Well, she definitely gave the money back, I saw it. But like... Yeah, she took it from the rack here. She, it was her rack. She gave him $150,000. What? what What is going on? In a surprising turn, Lou handed the money back to Adelstein, asking what would make him return to the game. He accepted the chips, but swiftly pack it up and left without another word. Now, everyone at the table was totally thrown off when Lou gave back 135K to Adelstein. Turns out Lou is so loaded that this amount didn't even phase her. Lou later explained on the Hustler Casino live show that she miscalculated during a game earlier. She thought she had a stronger hand with a jack of clubs but actually, she just had a jack for it. It was a serious mix-up. But here's where it gets spicy. Adelstein, feeling something was off, took to Twitter. He had noticed that Lou usually folds unless she's got a strong hand. He suggested that Lou might be cheating, possibly using a hidden device that vibrates to signal a winning hand. He thought Lou's lack of experience made her call too obvious. A dead giveaway to seasoned players. He made her give the money back. What do you mean made her? How do you he, make he, I told her to give the money back and took years of cheating. How do you make someone give the money back? I don't understand. I don't know. He took it. She put him, he, he somehow talked her into giving the money why back. Why would she be willing to do, if she didn't cheat, why would she be willing to give why, the money why back? Why are you? Now, are Adelstein you? isn't blaming the Hustler Casino Live for this mess, though. He said that when they stepped away from the cameras, he warned Lou that this incident was going to blow up online. According to him, Lou's reaction was telling. She looked shocked and immediately offered to return the money, no questions asked. To wrap it up, Adelstein is convinced Lou didn't just misread her hand. He was so upset by the whole situation and some aggression from RIP that he just couldn't play any longer and headed home. Now, speaking of getting frustrated, it brings us to Ben sitting beside Ron. Now Ron, in a situation that most of us would find trying, just couldn't stop revealing his hand over and over again. There was Ben, doing his best to stay in the game, but Ron kept thrusting those cards in his face relentlessly. It was like watching a pot about to boil over. And sure enough, Ben snapped. That's really good. Yeah, she wanted a raise. She wanted a raise. She wanted a raise. Fuck, it's fine. I don't care. I don't care. She wanted a raise. It's just the cards. I don't care. Okay, Ron? Just stop showing me your cards. Damn it. I want to quit this game. Just stop talking to me, all right? I don't want to see your fing cards. You play your hand. I don't care if you're betting, if you have it or you're bugging. I don't care, all right? Just play normally. You don't have to, like, Show me that you have the hair. Jesus Christ. Now, Ben might have gone a bit too far with his reaction, but really, that's up to you to judge. Okay, now imagine you're in a game where most players frequently switch between English and another language. Initially, you're all in for giving everyone the benefit of the doubt, 
but as the night stretches on, you can't help feeling unable to follow the conversation. It starts to gnaw at you, and is this the unspoken cost of entry to the big leagues? You crave acceptance, but not at the expense of feeling duped. So what's the game plan? In Florida, it's common for dealers to enforce an English-only rule during gameplay. If this rule seems to be slipping, especially in high-stakes private games, it's time for you to step in and make the others try to realize that you're actually clueless. But what if the subtle hints don't do the trick? Time to double down with a more direct approach, and that's what happened with Pepe. Hey, I have a hand, bro. I, I bit big. It doesn't speak please, English. Please, bro. It doesn't speak English. I know, English. But, but you go all in. Yeah, he, all right, you he go doesn't all in speak already, English. Bro. Don't He's talk asking to him, bro. me how much you have. What should I see? He, he asked me how, how much yeah. I bet. I said 8-8. He did. He said passion. Yeah. I know. He doesn't speak English. He took him him or the other guy, but you go all in already, bro. Alright, so misunderstanding. He doesn't speak English. That's I know. I'm understand, but you speak English or you you speak this or, or Nick Erbo. Okay. Right. I'll be a translator. I know. Yeah, everybody is a translator. Yeah, you want I'm, to I'm know. understand, Charles. Yeah. But you go all in already. Don't talk to him. I have a hand. <laughs> See? He's big. He's big. So you go all in already. I know I'm a, a bit big. He had a better hand than you. He fought to you. You went that side. I'm out. They're both right off. Right. Well, the tensions are high. After this, Pepe spoke to one of the floor managers, and for the next few rounds, everyone stuck to English. But if you still don't feel at ease, remember, it's okay to walk away. Whether it's a coveted spot on a live stream or an exclusive private game, your well-being and financial security trump everything. All right. PGT showdown between Phil Helmuth and Eric Person, Helmuth is at a pivotal moment in a heads-up match against Eric Person. So far, Helmuth's performance was shaky, and he already had a bit of a disadvantage with his stack. Now, Eric is not just any player. He knows exactly who he's up against. His strategy? Get under Helmuth's skin. <laughs> All right, my patience is out. I'm gonna have to take you out quickly now. I doubt it. It's no secret in the poker community that Helmuth can lose his cool and Eric is playing that card to his advantage. In a heads-up match, unlike a table with 10 players, you can't just chat with others. It's an intense one-on-one -on -one battle, and Eric is nailing it with his classic, aggressive style. He's not afraid to throw a few jabs, and it's clear Helmuth is feeling it's the heat. Ego. Oh, He's yeah. going in on it. As the tournament progresses, it's obvious these two are like oil and water. No love is lost between them, and it makes for an electrifying face-off. Helmuth, usually a strong personality, is finding a formidable opponent in Eric. I don't even want to be here playing this event with, with a guy like this. It's ridiculous. Bring me and guess what? Pearson clinched the game while our friend Helmuth stormed off and was clearly fuming. So you got to me, buddy. Congratulations. I just got in with the best, didn't I? Yeah, you're Not going to be any love lost between these guys. It's over. In the 2015 PCA, Srinivasan made this comment. Hawkins, seizing the moment, goes all in when Srinivasa attempts this audacious bluff. In 2005, at the heart of the World Series of Poker, the tension was high and the stakes were even higher. Everyone knows that when you're not in a hand, you should keep quiet about your cards. 
but this rule wasn't quite clear to Shahram Shekhan. During a crucial moment, while Mike Matuso was deep in a pot, Shahram broke this unwritten rule. In his first World Series, now the flop is 9-8 ace. Oh, Sheik's not happy. When the flop shows a 9-8 and ace, Shahram, clearly upset, pounds the table. His reaction was like flashing a neon sign, revealing that he would have had a good shot at that flop. This kind of reaction is a big taboo in poker. It's like giving free intel to the other players. Poker etiquette demands silence if you're not in the hand. The other players you should not give. You know we're in a hand, you need to shut the f up. Uh-oh. What did you say, Mike? Then things heated up. Mike. What did you say, Mike? Did you say something? I got it. Mike, always known for his fiery temperament, calls out Sean's blunder, and Mike's complaint is loud and clear. Sharam's outburst was out of line, especially in the middle of a high-stakes game. You cannot talk about a hand in between a hand. We're playing for a lot more. of money. You what? jumped off your chair like you Mike. threw away part of the pot. The tournament official, Jack Eel, steps in to calm the storm, but not before Mike goes all in and wins the pot, with Kessler folding and staying nice. out Those of the are falls Nuts. and Mattis how has his man. Nice. Nuts! He has taken down the shake, finally. Now, Mike's frustration was palpable, and he was right to be angry. In a game where every piece of information counts, getting hints from someone not even playing their hand is a big no-no. So, despite Mike's reputation for being argumentative, in this instance, he was spot on. And that's all for today, folks. For more exciting content, click on the video being shown on your screen right now. And remember to like and subscribe.